阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀。Four. Today we'll continue on treaties and response and retributions. Last week we talked about the、um, over engagement in、uh, sexual conduct, even within a、uh, marriage, even within the、um, how to say、uh, right conduct in sexual conduct between husband and wife is not、uh, encouraged because of. Uh, you know, first thing is the body has limits, and second thing is we、uh, overindulge in this kind of、um, attachments. You know, sensory pleasures and and the attachment to one another is not helping us in gaining any footholds towards the path of enlightenment.、Um, because in the end of the day. This will go,、uh, you know. The excitement will go. It will settle down, and、uh, you know, everyone. If you're lucky, you get a very good partner where you can walk with. But for the rest of your life, however, the fact remains: we will pass, and when we pass, we will have to leave each other behind. And that pain is very strong, especially.、Um, you can observe, right, from a very old couples that you know separated because of. Life and death, you know. And when one couple pass, the other couple will not last too much longer. And that's the observation, all right?、Um, uh, because you know they have been so used to each other forever, for a long time. But that's not the main point. The main point is this is a fact of life that we do not like to talk about most of the time, but we have to face it.、Um, all the time, you know. No one is exempted, no matter how. Powerful you are, or how、uh, successful you are, how healthy you may seem, this will come, and it will,、uh, how to say, it will happen. So the only way we can escape from, we can liberate from this、uh, endless cycle reincarnation, is to,、uh, is to, how to say. Reincarnation in between life and death without our control, you know, without ability to control is to gain nirvana. No short of that. Requirement any lower than that does not match the criteria of Buddhism. That's why I'm saying Buddhism is not just simply lighting the incense, you know, praying for some merits and fortune. All this we talk about is just to build up, you know, make it. A better life, a temporarily but a better life for us, and all these desire and stuff like that we have、uh, ultimately cannot help us to get any real resolution. It will just be one thing after another, right? We finish chasing this, we chasing the other thing, chasing wealth, chasing power, chasing lust, chasing beautiful people, beautiful things, beautiful sounds. Um, those are not、uh, helping us、uh, to actually find,、uh, you know, our ground and how do we get out of the extremes.、Uh, in Buddhism, it is the least requirement, the lowest requirement is to get to arahant, which is enlightenment. No short of that, right? To be a qualified Buddhist. So this is a very high order, tall order, and if we use that kind of strict. Criteria: A lot of people will not qualify, including myself. But because Buddhist Buddha is very compassionate, and they created something called、um, chanting method, Amitofo. That's his vow to make it easier for people like us who cannot, by their own discipline, who are not disciplined enough, who are not,、uh, of course, having a right condition, also does not have enough、um, mental tenacities. To gain enlightenment by our own effort. So this is why we have.
this school of pure land and why this is common amongst everyone because it helps common folks to get there uh, so in Sahawo as we mentioned strongest thing that bound us is our uh, attachments and among all the attachments we have love especially towards your um, kinsmen you know your family your close ones are very strong right husband and wife parents and children you know siblings those are we call it beautiful things but we also think we also understand this objectively as a attachment that's why Buddha named his son Rahula basically named his son the chain uh, to show us that you know this relationship we treat it as natural but of course, it is uh, the the. F- this is how human relationship started, you know, husband and wife, and then becomes parent and children, right? Husband and wife, they have children, and then there's pa- first is husband and wife, then is parent and children, and then expands to siblings, expands to friends, expands to subordinates, and um, and uh, and the boss, you know, boss and subordinates. So this this is the we call it natural order of things in human relationships. However, this is um, only in the very narrow spectrum, right? Only in the spectrum of human experience. We talk about uh, enlightened beings who see things more than one lifetime. We see you know things from the very beginning and to the very end for every single existence. Different people has different journey to get there and this is what why it's important to have something like Buddhism in this world it's breaking the boundaries and the perspective the horizon for many people including people who already have religious beliefs it expands their horizon to help them improve to get beyond you know this cycle because if we just merely aiming to go and enjoy the worldly pleasures or even heavenly pleasures which is still worldly pleasures you know the the, the criteria is very high you know worldly ple- pleasures does not just refer to human it also refers to heavenly beings you know even as high as the you know with formless realm where they uh, do not have thoughts or their thought is very quiet um, they have a very long life and they have no bodies no shape no form formless realm form realm and desire realm which is where we are so back to the topic at hand last week I mentioned about why we call desire realm because we you know why do we have male and females the only desire realms have male and females and going above desire realm form realm they only have a body a shape of body you know they they are not um, they do not have genders there's no need for genders there's no need for sexual reproductions they do not need this kind of engagement to produce uh, offspring they just naturally grow like a little bit like pure land where they have flowers open up and people just appear from there because it's pure uh, the lowest level of form realm is called the brahman brahman heaven basically where people practice non-sexual desires and uh, they do not con- uh, commit any sexual desires uh, their thought is able to suppress the sexual desires they might not they are not able they have not sever it but they have able to um, not s- suppress it more like how does it keep it under wrap with the power of meditation right right they able to keep it under wraps with the power of meditation that is not an easy meditation they need to exper- uh, they need to go through a lot of you know experiences uh, you know the body sensations the mind situations you know, to a certain level before they can reach that state of the world because every thing arise from our heart all phenomena arise from our heart and of course if your heart is pure your world will be pure so back in our desire realm where everyone has desires of different scale of different different appetites so to speak see we use food to describe things really desire this food and that food and you can make it into you know lust after one another you know woman and man or man to man woman to woman so these things are all desires all right and 
if it's unchecked, right? Humans are called humans because they have five precepts of preserving their integrity. Do not allow the desires run rampant. But if you observe the conducts of many people, you know, including ourselves sometimes, our thoughts, not just action, the thoughts as well, it's already breaching the standards, you know, the five precept standards. No killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, which is what we're talking about. No um, lying. Uh, and the lying refers to, you know, I have gained enlightenment, I'm a Jesus come again, that kind of lying. Uh, last one is no uh, intoxicants, drugs, you know, all sorts of things that muddles your mind. So those five things are not thorough, but they are the basic criteria. And a lot of us, including, you know, reflecting on ourselves, have we breached it, right, in action, and then second level, have we breached it in mind. Sexual misconduct or sexual conduct, this is a, a, a desires, right, including, uh, you know, action. But this is not restricted to action. Thoughts. If our thoughts do have that desire, no matter, even though you don't do anything, you didn't touch anything, right, but your mind still playing that again and again, you know, the, 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 the desires, the sexual desires and conducts, it's not, um, how do I say, it's, it's not helping us to get out of six dreams. Well, I'm talking about that kind of criteria, right? Of course, in the worldly perspective, you know, the normal husband and wife relationships, that's fine. Uh, even that has to let go eventually because, you know, how many times can you have? And then after that, you need to, you know, lighten that, um, the, 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 that thing will lighten out, you know, and eventually becomes taking care of children and, you know, responsibilities. Of course, you can have that to spice up marriage that is within your rights and, and it's good, right? It's helpful. But um, since we in contact with Buddhism, right, we could not allow ourselves stuck to that level of pleasure. Like I already, I already mentioned, bodhisattvas, right? The way they derive pleasure or so-called pleasure, in 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 essence, the the way they achieve, uh, how to say, peace of mind, happiness, because ultimately pleasure. Why we seek pleasure? We want to be happy. Why why we why we want to be happy? Because we don't want to suffer. The absence of suffering is happiness in this, in our standard. But for bodhisattva, they do not suffer anymore because they no longer bound by their they no longer um, confused of their conducts they understand the cause and effect thoroughly you know from the back of their hands and they understand what to do what not to do what kind of consequences when they do something and if that can be avoided they avoid it so the way they derive so-called pleasure or the way they derive peacefulness, blissfulness, joyness is from meditation. Why? Because they're able to uh, be free from the body. You know, 90% of all these problems, issues is because we have a body, right? This is like Taoist text, right? Even Taoists themselves, the, the Lao Tzu, the founder, already mentioned, I have a greatest trouble at present, that is, I have a body. I have a biggest disease at the moment. That is the disease of having a body. This body smells if I don't wash for five days. This body have hungers if I don't eat. This body desires touch, which is where sexual desire came in. This body desires stimulations, you know, pleasures from the touch, the contact, also like smooth stuff, all right? Han Si Hua, right? Smooth and fine things, you know, silk and all that, all right? Um, the tongue taste desires the five tastes, you know, spiciness, saltiness, sweetness, right? Um, umami, whatever, etc., etc. The eyes desires, you know, beautiful things, beautiful people, you know, good-looking people, bad-looking people. Uh, it desires anything that is pleasant to the eye, you know. We can say myself included or trying to make ourselves like this and that so i'm not trying to say oh we all should just you know be monk and go and high uh, be ascetics and all that uh that's not practical it, if someone can do that we need to praise them it's not easy that's why it's, it's to be praised because it's so very hard to 
not be controlled by your body's desires. Uh, put it in another way, the driver no longer drives the car, rather the car drives the driver. So it's very funny. If you want to use the car to reach the destination, to you know, get what you want and what you need, but in the end of the day, the driver no longer drives. They just sit there idle, and the actual the car itself goes wherever it likes. Like or or yeah, like a wild horse running amok, you know, without uh, riders doing anything. The riders is just being passive, sitting there doing nothing because they they are not aware of themselves they're not aware of these relationships you know so our relationship our body is very tenuous you know it desires all this pleasure and all that and if we just follow it without thinking without allowing ourselves to slow down and reflect on it hence we become animal that's why there is animal realm that's why you scold people you're a dog you're a beast Right? Some some even use that as a praise. Oh my God, you're such a dog, man. You know, you're a wolf. But it's not praise if you think about it, right? Those animals, why are they animals? Look at them. Do they have any sense of shame? Some of them has very few exceptions. Very intelligent, of course. But in general, look at all these daily domestic animals, dogs, animals. Do they have any distinction when they conduct sexual misconduct? sexual conduct they don't they don't distinguish between family and non-families you get my idea it's disgusting for from our human eyes so from a heavenly beings perspective they look at us they also feel disgusted as well right when we eat you know all the poops coming out all that bian uh, kui so that's why pure when you read the sutra you understand after eating there's no there's no excrements because there's nothing to eat it's just a habit so Buddha is trying to slow down, try to ease yourself away from this attachment to the body, to ha- the concept of having a body. Um, but I don't want to go too far on that. So back to this point. Um, but here, it does not talk about you know, that level where you want to be arahant. Okay? That, that means you sever your um, desires, sexual desires. No, but we need to mention that because going to pure land in there it's like the pure land as closest to, from our perspective is the form realm that's why Buddhist cosmology is, is very important to, to understand basics before we touch you know the the actual concept of you know pure land and actually practicing towards it why do we even need to practice towards it um, because form realm is based on no gender that means all this argument about sexual orientations or gender does not exist there. Doesn't have to. There's no there's no basis for it to happen. There's no need to derive pleasure from it. They replace with meditative pleasure. Uh, it's still a joy, it's still attachment, but it's a lighter attachment. Uh, Buddhist practice do not tell you to stop yet. Meditative pleasure. But first step of overcoming this, you know sexual desire is to replace it with something purer and yields even better uh, it's a, the purer form of pleasure in a sense you know that's why when people reach when you see someone meditate for a month two months three months they don't eat right eat food and sexual conduct works together you know Confucius says having food having uh, the uh, relationship between man and woman is num- two big things in human realm. Yin shi nan nu ren shi da yu chun yi. Right? Yin shi food, nan nu, man and woman. Or, you know, sexual conduct. In nowadays, is sexual conduct. These two are the huge, biggest thing uh, in the forefront of human's mind. Right? Bao shi shi yin yu. When your belly is full, you think about doing sexual conduct. You know, to pleasure yourself. So, so, understand our structure our fun our how our human world works you know in in, in a general terms will allow us to have a bigger perspective you know how do we navigate ourselves out of this you know because otherwise you just if if you just allow yourself to to stack stuck there you will not stay the same level you will get worse and worse because you you will do more you want to seek more excitement yu hai wu ya right Right, 
desire is a bottomless hole it's like a black hole it does not stop there you want more excitement you know like 100 years ago we were happy by just looking at opera now we feel like this is a ancient thing and it's it, it's in, interesting to do it once in a while but we need more because we're so used to this input we want more excitement so we have tv tv now is not enough we have uh what we have this smartphone smartphone is not enough in future we might even have the ar you know vr or <laughs> virtual realities you know your whole perceptions your five senses is um like wearing a headset right your eyes was in there you have the perception of you in a different world right that's not enough in future they might even do something to your brain you saw a lot of um we might watch a lot of um science fiction right but this might not be the fiction fiction you know it could happen they do something to your brain where you just immerse yourself entirely into a different world it's fun it's exciting right we go to pure land same thing but we we, we go there and we actually enhance our existence. This one is the, you're lying to yourself. It's like asking yourself, oh, okay, this is not real, this is not real. But you're still stuck in six dreams. So so think about that, right? Um, to elevate our existence, we need to, uh, we need to start working towards that direction. I cannot, I cannot be, because uh, I myself am trapped in this as well. But we need to set our sight, our goal in the right direction, out of six ribs. There's very lowest, lowest standard in Buddhist teaching. All right, falling short of that means that we need to go on with a lot of re- reincarnation just to get the idea, and then from there we need to work towards that idea of getting out of six ribs. It takes in a lot of other. Uh, lots of reincarnation again you know to get through all these dramas up and down from human to heaven from heaven to hell and then back to human uh, maybe in between we might become animal might become hungry ghosts you know we talk about buddha stories my all these histories where these um, great monks and buddha himself how far he has to travel before he came to this conclusion for them the conclusion means that they no longer be full they're no longer ignorant so moving forward everything they do everything they see and uh, uh, act they are in full control so then they can appear as anyone doing same thing as anyone but they are full fully controlled the driver is driving it it's just trying to bring other people to the path of enlightenment nirvana right to get across this seas of sufferings a lot of metaphors i know but whole point is to 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 give us the um hope and also the method to get out of it and but we need to bring out that sort of mindset um if you want to do that so let's continue to hide cruelty and malice under a facade of kindness to serve food unfit for consumption oh i'm sorry about that uh to lead the public astray wave hide evil ideas and occult practices so let's break it down one by one so this is all about cruel and petty and this one is hide cruelty and malice under a facade of kindness so basically double faced being a double faced person um, people who uh, rather have someone who directly angry at you or directly express their displeasure uh, at your act they have someone who smile at you laugh at you uh, laugh with you smile with you and even get close to you only to feel that painful dagger in the back so to speak um People who fake their appearances in order to get close and harm the others is, of course, is painful. And of course, people with wisdom, understanding of the world and of the um, of themselves as well, will not be easily fooled by this. Um, we can use in our context, right? Um, the um, Dharma ending age. Buddha already mentioned. There's a lot of 
uh, evil like teachers you know people who claim to be Buddha claim to be enlightened and they um, trying to use their eloquent speech to fool you over uh, these kind of people are as many as the sands in the Ganges River basically they are a dime a dozen uh, no they're just a, a lot um, why did Buddha say that right because Mara King back in his um, a dime a dozen right Mara King uh, back in Buddha's time already make a vow saying that uh, at the Dharma ending age where people no longer you know diligent in practice they will enforce they will find they will he, he will send his uh, people you know his uh, Mara is like you know word Satan in a sense you know um, he's not Satan as in from hell he's actually from the sixth level of desire realm I'll explain that later so the point is he will send his um, disciples you know his own uh, demonic disciples I don't like to use that word he's um his own disciples to disrupt the practice of Buddha um, practice of the Buddha Dhamma which is to enlighten to get our six realms remember what I mentioned about the minimum requirement is to get out of six realms uh, why? because Mara King himself is a heavenly being that means he has practiced a lot of good deeds why he do that? because he has attachments to the people under his rule his idea is I, as long as they do not leave six realms uh, I will not stop you from doing whatever you want good or bad good things you know um, as long as you not trying to get out of six realms become you know enlightened like other hunt uh, it's fine with me you know, because he has a strong attachment to the people uh, and and he's the more people under my rule the better under his rule is the under six rooms so we are one of very little dot in his domain his rule is not just like it's not just Galvin it's basically he's just having a lot of uh, wisdom and also have a lot of uh, influence and wealth and um, supernatural power and all that to, to sit on that throne but one thing about him is he do not like people leaving his realm so hence he will always hide out transform himself in as a monk sometimes as a buddhist or as you know any other um, people especially towards buddhism because we're trying to get our six dreams you know if someone do not try to get our six dreams they still will have um, disturbed but um i don't want to mix up with other tradition so as far as buddhist tradition concerned this Mara has always been trying to disrupt people's uh, ability to concentrate and get into the six, uh, get into the deep med samadhi, deep meditation, so that they can escape the six ribs. And you know the 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 amount of his follower of of his wealth, of his resources at his disposal is something we cannot imagine in Buddhist sanghas. You know. Um, and they also know how to shape shift, you know, how to change, disguise themselves. Um, they have a lot of tactics, a lot of ploys, a lot of um, strategies. Uh, but people who actually follow Buddha Dharma do not have strategies. They don't need strategies because cause and effect, number one. Number two, trying to do something outside your true nature is it's like trying to add legs to the snake. What's the thing to? I don't know. It's just Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, proverbs. What's the thing to? Basically, trying to uh, add a hat on top of a hat. You're already wearing a hat. You're trying to add more on top of it. It's just pointless. Because it will lead to, uh, if it's not a harmful thing, futility, waste of time. If it's a harmful thing, it will lead you to the six. Uh, the lower three realms, the hell realms, the animal realms, right? The hungry ghost realms. So, only when you 
get in depth with the Buddha Dharma, you understand how to navigate this. You understand your heart. Most important is your own self. Like how many of it has been tainted with desires, you know, with sexual desires, with um, power hungry, you know, desire for power, desire for wealth, um, and being full, being driven by it instead of you know having a body vow which is trying to help people trying to get out of six dreams and bring more people out of six dreams because they no longer have to suffer first separation second dissatisfaction third um, third is I just know these two satisfaction dissatisfaction which is what you want you can't get it first is what you uh, the people you like you actually you know have to separate with them and this attachment is not um, helping us and getting out of six realms helps us to achieve that perspective and equilibrium so um, six uh, for us going to pure land is the most um, obvious method other than that we need to spend a lot of time and someone like Lakmara will be able to stop you from progressing much easier if you use a different method you know even in I'll continue when I finish this to serve food unfit for consumption well it's common right in the food industry you know they might cut down the cost you know driven by you know petty concerns they're trying to cut down the cost to save that petty margins and in the end they actually harm you know people un- that they s- try to service um, and then the last one is lead the public astray with the evil ideas and occult practices so this one links with the first half right we we, we talk about um, people who disguise themselves and become um, anyway sorry man my mind is not in one place uh, it's been a long day so to lead the public astray with evil ideas and occult practices no I just tried struggling trying to link this word together because they are to be honest they are individual they have their own point there's no point to string things they are not connected first one is talking about you know how a person become two-faced well why would a person become two-faced right first thing is their own um, objective you know warrants them to do that they trying to get close and trying to gain something and so they need to appear uh, in the way that the person that have their interest would be right? and the other one is maybe trying to um, gain some fame and glory and all that number two is pure profits pursuit of profits um, you want money above everything else even though you might poison a lot of people uh, and the money you get is like petty you know uh, and the cost the consequences is you're gonna get even more uh, issues with your um, and actions um, other than that what else uh, the last one is lead the public astray with the evil ideas or occult practice last part is what I'm trying to convey for the last half an hour because we talk about um, issue of people imitating Buddhist monk Catholic priest uh, enlightened beings some gurus you know pass down from some eminent traditions only to find out they actually uh, you know gather a lot of people and tell them to do something abnormal you know some might fell into the um, trap of you know losing wealth to this top master some might felt themselves losing their you know body because this person is very lustful you know they use their influence and all that have a sexual relationship with a lot of people all these kind of people it's very prominent throughout you know 1960s, 70s you have seen a lot, we have heard a lot of cult masters you know in the US they already have a lot right uh, 
I forgot the name, uh, Jonestown Massacre, right? Basically, they tell a bunch of um, students, uh, young people, and uh, when the FBI is going to find them, find out, you know, where they are and trying to, you know, save these uh, cultists, you know, from themselves, basically. This person who lead the cult, you know, tell all of them to permit, commit suicide in collective form. So this um, you know, becomes a Jonestown massacre. There is that place in Jonestown. So the idea is these uh, people always um, trying to find a way to you know use people's sincerities and uh, sincerity to you know to their own ends. So in Buddhism, what we can say is. If our faith in the teaching of the Buddha is not strong, that means we did not immerse enough, we did not understand enough, we did not uh, cultivate strong enough roots in our, you know, practices. We easily get swayed. You know, there is a saying by a uh, Tang Dynasty's uh, Master Shandao, one of the patriarch of Pure Land Buddhism. In one of his commentary. Um, you know, she has mentioned how strong your faith should be in your practice. Uh, how do you get to a higher level of reborn in Pure Land? All right, he bring this one out and inform us. All right, no matter what kind of people appear in front of us, so how do we discern from true Dharma to a false Dharma? All right. True Dharma, a Dharma that actually leads you to breaking out of six realms. That's true Dharma. That's the standard that cannot be changed no matter who tells you. He might appear as Shaimuni Buddha, appear as Master Chinko. Anything he says against all right, what the Sutra mentioned, you know, precepts, meditative tranquility, and then um Prajna Paramita, wisdom, you know, the, the wisdom. Jetting Hui, this is the basic method of working towards enlightenment and how we get there and how deep we go, that's another thing, the scale. So, anyone, no matter who they are, if they what they say is against what the teachings of the Buddha did, we cannot listen to them. Right? That's why we need to do the hard work, you know. Master Ching Kong did the hard work by digesting himself and and give it to us, all right? We, all we need to do is just listen to it enough, all right? Regrettably, I myself also have been um, laying this uh, untouched for a long time, the Dhamma listening. So we should continue to listen to the Dhamma. Especially when someone already digest for us, make it simpler for everyone to access. There's no reason not to hear it and whenever we can. If even if that person attain arahant with great miracle powers, supernatural powers, and they tell you some sort of method and practices and what they say does not coincide with the teachings of the Buddha we cannot listen even if Bodhisattva or they appear as Bodhisattva appear as a great Bodhisattva like Guan Yin Pusa Manjushri Pusa you know uh, all these Bodhisattva telling us whatever they told us does not stay in line with the Buddhist teaching you know with the Buddha, Buddha Dharma we cannot listen you know those are leading us astray we call it new ideas and occult practices all right and even uh how do they, even buddha himself or even something appear as buddha it's not buddha himself something appear as buddha in front of you telling you all these you know ideas and all these methods that are using the terminologies on the sutra but does not use it in the right way Right, the concept is quite quite uh, yin yang quite cheap. Uh, the way they say it is just not in full, not in line with the Buddha Dharma, the principle of Buddha Dharma. 
we cannot listen to them. Why? Because every Buddha, when they say the Dharma, is always 100% compatible with other Buddha's Dharma. The Maitreya Buddha, when he say the Dharma, is exactly the same way that Shaiyamuni Buddha would say it. There's no I'm special because they all attain the same enlightenment. There's no Amitabha's enlightenment. There's no Shaiyamuni Buddha's enlightenment. There's no domain of Buddha enlightenment. Those is those are coming from our perspective. You know, we like to carve things in categories because we have mind. Unfortunately, we we are restricted by this machine. We restrict ourselves by literally creating this machine. Right? We call mind. And if you understand Chinese word tian, si xiang, you know, si xiang. What is si xiang in Chinese? Thinking. In Chinese words, si was comprised of, you know, the uh, the carving or uh, the boundary, the markation of the boundary between different patch of lands, it's between between um, paddy field and heart. Basically, our mind has created difference. Anyway, the point is, those, you know, or realm of pure land, realm of Maitreya Buddha, realm of, um, you know, Shaimuni Buddha, those are made because of our condition. It was meant to help us to get back into the Changji Guang, I don't know how to mention in English, the, um, the Nirvana, the actual Buddha's Nirvana. Right? There's so many Nirvana, um, there's so many stages of Nirvana, so to speak. Arahant's Nirvana is only number one. Very hard for us, but it's number one. It's, it's, it's the beginning of the journey. We haven't even stepped into the beginning of the journey. All right? the, 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 the three kalpas of, three great kalpas of um, Santa Asan Shijie, all right? the three great kalpas uh, that takes to become Buddha, 100% Buddha, right? I don't want to go in there now, it's premature. It's, there's a lot of um, categories of that. For now, as far as I can say is, um, every Buddha came from the same place, right? Not just every Buddha, even other proper religion and all that. If you understand their intention behind it, they are talking about the same thing, all right? So there is no margin of error, so to speak or they might, you know, be different. They will all lead back to the same thing. The only difference is who's listening it, right? If I'm listening it, I hear it like that. Buddha only say one thing, but thousands of people hearing thousands of different parts of what he said. Only when you become Buddha, like I mentioned about Buddha story for Venerable Maha Kashyapa, when Buddha was sitting there in peace, in front of thousands of disciples, everyone's very uh, curious of what Buddha have to say, but Buddha remained silent for a while, maybe half an hour, maybe one hour, I, I forgot the time, but why? he's very quiet, he didn't say anything, he's at peace, he's in meditation. Suddenly he picked up a flowers, and only Mahakashyapa laughed, smiled at his um, action. So he connected to Mahakashyapa, Makashepa sees what Shaimuni Buddha sees. They see the same thing. Only then he can be passed down. He, he can be considered to pass down the the Dharma. So the rest of us will, will still listen to the Buddha's talk, but we did not 100% connect with his talk. Hence, there are margins of error. It came from the receiver. That is the problem. And hence, there are why why this you know cult practices able to sneak in if your connection with the Dharma is not strong enough that means you are unable to discern what is right and wrong you get fooled by this flowery language or by this seemingly logical and reasonable thinking but when you put it in practice it's actually problematic uh, it's actually uh, against the ideas of you know compassions and wisdom um, so this we need to really rely on Dharma because Buddha Dharma Sangha, Dharma is number one. Yeah. Um, Buddha relies on Dharma to become Buddha and Buddha is the one that expounds the Dharma. 
And the Sangha is the people, congregation of people who practice the Dharma and spread the Dharma for generations to come. Uh, so, although they are all important, but Dharma is very important. It's utmost important. Uh, yeah. So, Venerable Master Shan Tao mentioned it very earnestly, you know, in that commentary. You know, why did he say that? Because in Dharma ending age, people who, you know, those occult occultists, these um, people who twisted the teachings of the Dharma, are as many as the sands in the Ganges River, basically as much as the sands, as much as sand, grain. Uh, and the way they say it is very similar to the Buddha teachings, but not talking about the same thing. They're trying to use the same vocabulary pointing towards entire different thing. You know, trying to make it as miraculous as, or uh, trying to cloud it, make it muddy, make it foggy. People who really penetrate and understand the meaning of the Dharma. They do not use those flowery words to cow red up. Right? They use the standard of the same person at the era. So Master Ching Kong used the standard of the people of the era. Granted, some people felt that his words are even very hard to understand. Of course, the hands comes other kind of people that trying to explain the same thing using different languages, like what I'm trying to do now to myself. Uh, and others hopefully but in the end of the day it will arrive at the same conclusion right when you when you use that as a certification method you will not be fooled so how do we understand what is the Buddha Dharma what is the correct Buddha Dharma you know first thing Buddha already mentioned the rules you know follow the Dharma not the people not, not because this person is famous this person is more powerful has more influence we follow them you should follow because he follows the Dharma his action follows the Dharma alright in that case I'm not qualified as teacher I'm already announcing here because I'm still not fully in accordance to the Dharma what I'm trying to do here is to share to you the standard that I'm trying to pursue hopefully we can all pursue towards Dharma okay even Master Ching Kong's teacher, Mr. Li Bing An, and his teacher's teachers, Master Ying Guang, do not dare to tell himself as te- do not dare to declare himself as teacher. Right? They are all enlightened beings. Master Ying Guang is to come again Bodhisattva of that means he reincarnated from Bodhisattva uh, Da Si Zi, which is the right hand man or left hand man, I forgot. Left hand man of the Amitabha Buddha. Right, Ying Guang Da Si Da Si Pusa Jai Lai. Right, this is uh, mentioned in his biography. He didn't say it himself. Someone exposed him, and he's like, "Shh, I'm, I still have I still have a mission to do here. Do not say something like that." He did not acknowledge it. But when he passed away, then yes, it was reviewed. So, using this as an example, people who uh, r- say themselves as you know Buddha and Bodhisattvas, but they do not immediately go into nirvana which is pass away from our point of view is problematic because they're sitting here to avoid to, to, to attract money fame respect that is not the mindset of a enlightened beings alright you already explained a lot merits karma those things happens by itself if you practice the correct course you will get the correct effect alright so those are Ming Byron, you know, those are enlightened beings. They understand that more than us. They witness that. They don't just understand like thinking. They actually witness that past and present and future. There's no point for them to attach to this. All right. Those are, how to say, if our heart is not in the right place, if we have desires, if we allow our greed, you know, if we allow our hatred, if we allow our lust, if we allow our um, ignorance, you know, to grow, which is not aware of the Dharma, ignorance, not aware of what is right and wrong, ignorance, not aware of where do we stand, you know, um, as a people, you know, what, not aware of what is important in our life, that's ignorance, not aware of, you know, our conduct, not in accordance to the Dharma, not in accordance to our conscience, is ignorant. Ignorant is not just. You know, I don't know. Is even you know, 
you still do it. Even though you know it's wrong, you still do it. In that case, I declare I am ignorant. That's very important because this mistakes has been repeated again and again. We're still ignorant of the consequences. So, 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 um, that's why we can't turn our life around that easily because we keep repeating the same mistakes. Right? This is how important Dharma is. Um, this is why I said, I take so much time to talk about this, you know, even in the previous chapters, because those are actions, right? Those are mindsets of uh, people who are not aware of the consequences of doing that and allowing themselves to continue getting swayed by the desires, swayed by the pleasures, short-term pleasures, long-term pain, so to speak, right? Um, yeah. So, what kind of standard do we follow? Start from the basics, understand to get into Buddhism, we need to begin by taking refuge in Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Right? There's a way, there's a reason why they have the system like this, because it will be very confusing if we don't have this kind of system. It's why Buddha started in his five, first five bhikshu, first five monks, after he enlightened at the age of 30, by starting, you know, with the triple gem. First is Buddha take refuge in Buddha, second is take refuge in Dhamma, third one is take refuge in Sangha. This is not just ceremonial, it's not just pawn and circumstances, you know, all these are just to remind us, right, we do all these ceremonial just to remind us. Why are we starting with Buddha? Buddha is the one that started the movement, started the Dhamma spreading. And Buddha himself, if we talk about really thorough understanding, Buddha do not think up the Dharma himself. It's not creative practice. He's not trying to make a academic award firm. You know, it's, this is not a race of creativity. Creativity is a, a, a byproduct, not the intention. Buddha talks about what is the reality of the world. What is the reality of the uh, situation we are right here, our life, you know, our whole life as individual as the whole human being and also our world around us so about ourselves and the world around us he has thoroughly understand and no longer be fool no longer be ignorant of it the hands we call him the awakened one and what he said was exactly what the Buddha of his previous time said. So he do not twist or change any uh, words from the previous Buddha. Of course, they're different language back then, right? Different people, different language. They have the same meaning, right? We need to learn to read more than that, right? Of course, he won't speak in Sanskrit for the previous Kashyapa Buddha, Bodhi, uh, Buddha Kashyapa, but previous Buddha Kashyapa speaks the same Dhamma, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha in that language, right? In our current language, English, you know, before that Chinese and then Korean, Japanese, same thing. This is the same logic. The whole point is always have Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Always have the, rely on the Dhamma, not the people. Uh, rely on the Toro meaning, not the Antoro meaning. What is Toro meaning? What is Antoro meaning? Toro meaning is something that um, makes sense to you, but we have different levels, right? At, at different stage, we have different things that make sense. Really, what it means is something that actually breaks you out of six dreams, something that literally is from the heart of the Buddha. Uh, not trying to accommodate with your level. Basically, something that is like that. Would the Buddha's situation, the, the level of the Buddha is like that. They will not lower the level for you just because we cannot catch up with it. Right? Hence, Buddha always have, later we categorize into Jiu Jing So, Fang Bian So. Right? I don't want to go too deep into it. Basically, 
something he said that is directly correlates to the Buddha level, which is the full enlightenment. No compromise, nothing short of it. Right? But why did he have to sometimes tone down or break it down parcel, piece and parcel for different people? Because some people cannot take it. And Buddha always came out from the place of compassion. He's not trying to be all high and mighty. That's not Buddha. He's trying to make sure everyone able to get exactly what they need so that they're able to improve their existence. So he he modified it. He didn't modify it. He just make it simple so that they can accept. If they only accept 20%, they all, they will, Buddha give them 100%, but they only can get 20%, so to speak. Not once did his speech, he, he trying to cut, like, you know, construction workers trying to cut some material out. No. Everything, every Dharma he says 100%. It's just, in that context, he can only say that much. He will not try to add too much on top of it if the students do not understand what he's talking about. Only when a high-level student like Bodhisattva, Manjushri, Bodhisattva, Guan Yin, who are already Buddha and a PS student, just to help us, he can 100% say exactly what he's trying to say. And the student can 100% understand exactly what she's trying to say. So this takes two sides to understand. The people who teach and the people who received. He has to have that level in order to, for him to fully expand on it. Otherwise, he can just summarize it so that we can get the ideas and then we can practice on something we can practice because we don't understand what he's talking about. It's too high. So we just talk about those day-to-day -day stuff, you know, how to be a uh, good person, how to cultivate merits, how to get out of um, troubles, uh, how to get a good uh, children you know, born into your family, how to get a good wife, how to get a good husband, how to get a good job. Those are day-to-day -day stuff, needs, right? But that's not the point. You know, those are desires from the listeners. So he give it to the listeners what they want. But if they really get in depth and learn the Dharma, understand the heart of the Buddha, what's, what's his intention, ultimate intention is, then he, they will let go of all these attachments gradually or suddenly up to them, up to their circumstances, and they will pursue a more thorough meaning of life. They will pursue full enlightenment. Before that, they will start with Arahant. They will start with, you know, different stages of enlightenment. You know, the original one has only four, but later when you look at the um, uh, the, 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 the Flower Adornment Sutras, you know, it helps us to understand there's so much depth in the Buddhist teaching. It's not just like that. It's just they compress into these four stages, but when you actually go further until the level of actual Buddha himself, it's actually a very, um, it's, a, it's a very, how is it, stage by stage kind of thing. But from the point of view of an enlightened one, they are not separated. And the easiest one is also the deepest one, just like your iPhone. Uh, your iPhone has all these high technologies, but they make it so easy, even three years old can do it. You just need to swipe, unlock, and then they can play with games, play with phones, or functionalities in a very high level machine. This is how wisdom works. So I'm going back to the point. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, right? When Buddha expound the Dharma, the Dharma uh, gets into the heart of the people and help them to get out six ribs. And the Sangha is the practitioners of the Dharma. They pass down the words of the Buddha, which becomes the Dharma, and that Dharma becomes the foundation of the Sangha, Sangha's formation, like a constitution, so to speak. They use that as their um, foundations to build up their practice, their, their, you know, their word, their integrity. Uh, if we follow the word of cultists, follow the words of people who go against this principle, you know, of relying on Dharma, not on people, you know, not just because you're famous, I follow you. Rely on the thorough teaching, not the unthorough teaching. That means rely on 
what Buddha actually trying to say, not what Buddha has to say in the face of students who cannot understand. He say it one time, and then people don't understand, he say it again, so that they can understand. So, rely on the wisdom, not on the thinking, thoughts. So, wondering thoughts. You should rely straight from your heart, not thought, wondering thoughts. It's very hard for me to explain. It's like Zen Buddhism, literally. Only Mahakashyapa understands among thousands of students. Rely on, yeah. All right. So if people want to destroy the Buddha Dharma, they start with breaking up the Sangha because people are no longer showing a good example of what Dharma can do, the sample of Dharma. And how to break up the Sangha, you know, people wear the robe of the Buddha, just like Mara's wow. When, you're, when your Dharma is in its dying stage, the ending age, I will send my, you know, children and great grandchildren is my people to wear your rope sneak in infiltrate into your organization and you know also very well cultivated but you know everything I say is actually against what you're trying to help them it's against enlightenment against uh, against gaining enlightenment uh, everyone you know Buddha when he heard Mara say that he didn't say anything he only um, has tear on his eyes um, so Dharma is the ultimate standard where we measure if someone is truly following the teachings uh, not just you know because you look like a monk or you look like a practitioner immediately thinking that you are the uh, qualified one no you have to see what they practice Same thing, even among the correct Dharma, right? Um, we need to concentrate on one method at a time, right? See, Mara will also, which is the Demon King and all that, they will also teach you how to break, uh, how to let go of, I mean, forsake the evils to all the goods, right? However, they stop there. They do not continue with that. They will tell you to do, you know, be vegetarian. They will tell you to eat, uh, you know, um, do not killing the five precepts, same thing. Those are common, you know, human realm. And they will tell you to, you know, you know, cultivate good deeds, you know, giving, practice giving, uh, practice uh, you know, volunteering, help those in needs. So, that's why Mara is Mara. So he has a lot of fortune, merits, right? I'm not trying to paint it in a very biblical way of, you know, you are evil and you're good. The reality is different, all right? It's not like that. They have wisdom as well, and wisdom surpassed us. We are not as smart and as wise as him. The only problem is he has attachment to his people. If he let go of that, he become Buddha himself. That, that's how easy it is. However, he's not. He's attached to it, all right? Just like we attach to our own vices. So the point is, it has to be at least leading you towards liberation from life and death. That basically, basically um, unwillingly going into life and death. Okay, I say it in this way. It ha the, the Dharma that you're listening if it's not helping you to get out of three realms, which is out of his realm, right? Then you are not following the right Dharma, right? Maybe just telling you to, oh yeah, you just, you know, do some good deeds. They are good, but they are not thorough. Just like Buddha give, set up the Si Yi Fa. Follow the people, follow the Dharma, not the people. Follow the thorough teaching, not the unthorough teaching, which is this case. Follow the um, wisdom, not the uh, thoughts. Follow the meaning, not the words, yeah. Uh, just as I say, not the language, not the or Pali or Sanskrit. 
those are fine. You know, we learn this, we understand the the the, the language, but that the point is more important. There's also, there's also argument about oh yeah, because you know Buddhism translated in China, maybe it's not the same. No. It, had, it can be in Pali, it can be in Sanskrit, it can be in English, it can be in Chinese. It doesn't matter as long as it follows the four Dharma seals, right? San Fa Ying, right? What is San Fa Ying? This thing needs to be retaught in every uh, Dharma language. Dharma Mudra, the seal of the Dharma, the distinguished mark of the Dharma, all right? All, all Buddhist teaching doesn't matter pure land doesn't matter Zen doesn't matter how high and how how amazing um, the, the explanation is it always have to have these three qualities right first thing Zhu Xing Wu Chang so impermanence Zhu Fa Wu Wo number two there is no the full sense of self right in all phenomena there is no permanent self first thing is everything that happens is not permanent second thing is Zhu Fa Wu Wo alright there is no uh, 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 so-called self, a soul, in 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 in, in our uh, Buddhist teaching, right? That means false sense of self, false sense of ego. The last one is Nie Pan Ji Jing, uh, the tranquility of the Nirvana, which is going to pure land in our case. Going to pure land, we no longer be bound by the false sense of self, false sense of permanency. That's why we pursue pleasures. Because we we seek, we constantly seek that you know, fun, that amazing feeling, you know, um, those what is it? Those constant movements, you know, none of them is permanent. You know? Maybe relationships, you always think we're gonna be like this all the time. You know, very close, very lovely, dovey. We know it's impermanent. Or, you know, you have a good going with your family. You always think you're going to be like this forever. One day, disease happens. Impermanence. All right. You like your pets. Your pets been with you. Every moment is there. Of course, it, we all know it's impermanent. Everything arises because the road condition is right. Everything ceases to arise. That means everything falls apart because there's no longer that condition to stay um, and this has an element of past, present, future as well and if you want to go deep you can go like 2-3 hours on this that's why like when Dharma really go really deep you can go one month non-stop but you need deep meditation for that because you will be stuffed to death or anything second one is too far Wu you know there is no um, self in everything else. Uh, it, not just impermanence, but there's no so-called me. You know, everything we do, every everything, um, because if you say it's me, that means you can control. That means it's permanent. Ability to control, ability to be permanent. Nothing can be permanent. Nothing can be controlled. Can you control yourself to be 18 years old right now? If you cannot be 18 years old right now, nice and beautiful and young, then you can't. Right? So all these powerful people, like look at all these people at, you know, billionaire and stuff like that. Can they control it? 100%? No. These are impermanent because this happens because they are having a right condition, a right cost, the right you know, amount of people, they knew the right people, they have the motivation to do that, and all these condition works together for him to accumulate that level of wealth and power. People support them, you know, people stand with them. And this is the condition. And this is also, you know, why we always have cycles. You know, when you go to the peak, you will fall. And when you fall, you go to the peak. There's no 100% self, you know. Um, that's why the idea of, you know, having a creation God, having this something is a human projections of, you know, trying to control. Something's going to be controlling this is from happening. Unfortunately, you know, it's not. The reality as observed by Buddha, there's no one dictating entity trying to dictate whether you feel happy or sad. 
you know anything else is just mudding it up so what we what we want to say is in the end of the day from impermanence and there is no self we understand that everything has uh, become something because of the condition you know you become a human because your body cells works like that your DNA works like that you have the face you have the eyes you have the nose you have mouth um, table is table because it has four legs or whatever three legs two legs as long as it has legs and the tabletop or look at the truck when you take off the wheels take off the container is it still a truck it becomes a different thing it becomes sedan you know if you put a smaller chassis on top or if the truck you know the container itself you put it out of it it no longer become truck it becomes a box so all these are changing constantly when you're here you're you are a fellow buddhist practitioner when you go out and work you become a colleague when you become a mother you have two children with you you become a mother you know when you go out again you become another people's boss or people's um you know subordinates or teachers or students these things are constantly changing number three the third dharma seal is you know nirvana cessation of suffering all right cessation of pain cessation of these constant troubles um like this one is where we find ourselves is where we find what is permanent see first two they try to break down what is not permanent what is not self this is not self this is not self this is not self this is nothing here in your five senses and your six senses is self because we are we are already heading towards the wrong direction from this point of view from the point of view of what is permanent what is self everything we touch here is not self is not permanent not self means you can't control every single thing right the thing you think you can control is because the condition is right not saying that you have entirely nothing to do with it that's wrong karma cause and effect that's what we're learning about Taizan Gai Yimpian this, this book but this cause and effect um, we have contributed to it but we alone cannot just control it like that it has to have a good right condition for it to, to come into beings so you know our body our mind our you know formation of human being our even our consciousness if we unwrap it is not us um it's just we just put names slap some names and labels on it to understand better if you really go deep none of them is permanent none of them is yourself um last one tells you what is yourself what is actually permanent and what is the state of permanent state of fully awareness you know fully back to your real true self true buddha nature you know or the god the so-called god we've been praising who is it you know without slapping labors on it right it's actually our true nature our dharma nature you know our 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 the one that can create the one that can cease to create uh, the one that is no longer swayed by the outside uh, swayed by life and death life and death is a very proof of impermanence you know pain and pleasure is proof of impermanence dualities and so this world is full of it's just peaceful it's just serene blissful joy um you can't describe it that's why buddha has uh like four way four things he cannot help he cannot help people to uh better their own consequences you know cause and effect is your own he can only give you the condition uh, our condition is pure land he gave us this condition whether you want to use this condition to actually go and bear into fruit of being buddha or you just use this to bear the fruit of having more merits and fortunes in these six premiums it's up to you what is your goal where do you want to go 
do you want to use Amitofo to go to Pure Land or do you just want to use Amitofo to gather more merits and fortunes? It's, it's entirely up to the people who has the cost. What is your cost? Amitofo is just an effect. If your cost has include, you know, I'm talking about the third one, trying to get to Nirvana, trying to get to, uh, you know, cessation of suffering. In our context, in a very practical way, if we do not have a heart to save people, a heart to help people out of six dreams, if we do not invoke the vow of body heart, that means invoke the vow of trying to get people out of the suffering they're in, right? It's another matter where you do not have the right condition to do that, right? You are not having the right kind of influence, right kind of language, right kind of timing. That's fine. But you have that heart. You want to help if you can, right? You want to help if you can. Whatever you can do, you're trying to help people to understand and aware of the Dharma, trying to get out of six rooms. If you have that heart, you already fulfill that condition to go to Pure Land. And then the rest is just focus concentrate so going back to this lead the public astray right it's not just men outside inside Buddhism if you're supposed to practice this method and you're supposed to achieve success within this method until you reach that point of success wherein you fully enlightened you're able to no longer be swayed and you were able to go to pure land or gain nirvana if you follow other method you're still able to gain nirvana all right until then if someone tells you hey you should change to other method of practicing and it's a legit method from buddha it's also another path laid down by buddha and then they, some people tell you this is also what buddha said so you can also change to you know another method is that considered as you know following the Dharma properly? No. Only people with a bit only when you reach the end, just like a circle. If you reach the center, going anywhere is easy. If you are staying on the surface, you haven't even touched the heart of the circle, you're trying to swap to another point. So what you do is you only hop on the surface. You never get to the heart of the matter. So so this is another, how to say, even smarter way to lead you astray. All right? If not ignorant, intentional. All right? They lead you astray by telling you to change the other methods. Not that the other method is wrong. Not that the other method is lower or, 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 or worse. The other methods are equally as good as the method you're currently learning as long as they, they are under Buddha's teaching and they lead you to that point. Problem right now is number two, is you no longer able to reach to the center because you keep changing your path. Instead of a nice, you know, imagine a circle with a center as Nirvana or as, you know, gaining enlightenment, no longer be suffering what you're suffering right now or what you have to deal with right now, life and death, separation, dissatisfaction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. From the surface, you know, of the circle, trying to go inwards, you have to go straight line. That's the fastest one. Instead, you swap around your method and all that, waver and waver and waver. You know, worst case, uh, best case is you take longer to reach your destination. Worst case is you thought there is no destination, you left the circle entirely. Circle, in our word, is dharma, so to speak the way to lead you to the enlightenment. Worst case is you thought there is no, it, 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 the Buddha is lying, or even worse, right? Defamation and all that. You thought, oh yeah, th there's no such thing as uh, enlightenment. You know, those are just, uh, all these doubts and everything seep in because you didn't actually keep going. And then you left the circle, and then you keep wandering around for how many kalpas before you get back to the circle again because you understand I need to get out of six dreams. You still can't get out of six dreams even though you try so many options. So once you understand that what you're learning, once you understand this is the method, don't change, stay put. Having said that, right, your path is already set from the 
point of view contacting with Buddha Dharma Sangha with the Buddhism into the point of enlightenment you can use other method you know as long as we're in Buddha's teaching to help you enhance you you can even use like what we use now Confucius and Taoist teaching to enhance your pathway like Master Ching Kong used this because like Master Ying Guang mentioned these are in accordance to what Buddha is trying to teach first thing is you know do all good do all, second thing second thing is no first thing is to silver all evils second thing is do all the good deeds so that you can you know have a do not be um trapped by your conscience you know you you have no uh do nothing against your conscience and then the third one is uh purify your thoughts and you know go into the go into enlightenment whatever we practice whatever we're doing right if we bring it out of buddhism just in our worldly matter we also need to find a place where we can pour ourselves our life energy into it so that we can find you know what we can contribute right instead of hopping around and wondering and don't know what we're doing even though we might be successful even though we can be very successful with some random things we did we still feel like it's not what I'm actually trying to do you know you can earn a lot of money with that a lot of accolades you still feel like I'm not doing what I'm actually meant to do my mission in my life so to speak then it's very sad because all these things are fleeting like impermanent they will go away and leave you behind so it's very important to find your center what kind of center do I go you know where am I trying to get to and then you go towards it reach that target and then you enhance your existence um, it's very hard to find your own center your own target right but right now here in this condition we have a target we have a um, goal realization we need to get our six dreams okay to get our six dreams we need to follow the Buddha's teaching and among all the Buddha's teaching which is a lot there is a method called chanting Amitofo and Pure Land has a lot of method to practice as well among all the period Pure Land practice chanting Amitofo is one of the easiest and most convenient one so now we set our target we need to work towards this target you know, no matter what come come what may we'll continue persist on this path and if we have questions and answers and, and we're trying to explore the alternatives alright it's perfectly fine because this is not a cult or something you attract here or anything but this is a but always come back learn understand that you know you may be exploring other ways and other methods that are more suitable to you once you get onto it you know, especially when you start it you will have a lot of um, ganying so to speak you know like this this um, response and retributions you have a lot of like um, signs in your life and saying that this is the right thing you just feel that it's right and you're doing it right and everything is like yep yeah, this is a good direction a lot of people who started practicing you know the Buddhism especially a certain pathway they have that feeling of everything is right and that's when you understand okay now I need to persist all right beginning is a bonus trying to keep yourself in so that you understand this is the path that I can pursue all right because it just feels right with my values with my um, the way that my living my lifestyle and stuff like that otherwise you have gone already now you hear of one foot in the other foot still not sure yet the other foot is to keep growing and walking and walking and all these obstacles all these troubles um, that you know that is befalling you or temptations or rewards that might also sway you is part of the journey that we have to contend with and learn you know to live with so that we can still continue on this path and until we reach the point of you know able to go to pure land and the best way to get there is by your know, your own vow not by you know 
not passively waiting for someone to, to chant for you. Especially when you still have energy, have energy, have the drive. Work towards that end. You know, do not rely on other people to send you off uh, to that moment. So now in this journey, we have a lot of things to deal with, you know, people, family, relationship, etc., desires and stuff like that. But you cannot lose the sight of your center. Doesn't matter what happens, that center needs to be there. Only then your life has a certain attraction. You have a sense of you have a You know, attraction that pulls towards. Otherwise, it's just a splinter sand. Nothing, nothing is done. You could not gather anything. All right, it's it's a it's a yeah. It's messy. It can be messy, but as long as you have a center, you have a goal, you will be able to create attraction. When your condition is right, and you know you no longer get muddied by all these desires and all the stuff, because those things come and go, like the three dharmas you already mentioned, impermanence. There is no so-called self in our current world that we're observing, right? And then only number three, nirvana, is the more utmost blissful and the um, joyous thing in our world, because in there we find ourselves. In there we find what is permanent. You know, Buddha nature is permanent. This permanent Buddha nature able to create so many impermanent stuff. That's the paradox of this. Right? Well, how is this permanent Buddha nature able to create so many impermanent stuff? Because we lost our thoughts and we're wandering around. And why do we are wandering around? Because we're trying to find ourselves when we lost our our you know equilibrium. And everything we're trying to hop around, you know, from relationship we're trying to find ourselves, from the career we're trying to find so called ourselves, something we can control, something we can dictate, something we can feel safe and all that. But we, we, we still cannot find it. Alright? And in in, 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 in in friendships as well. In any walks of our life, you know, we're trying to find so-called ourself, yet we can't. All right. Only when we realize there is no self, then we understand this boundary that we set as ourself is limiting us from actually realizing our true self. It's very confusing right now the way I say it, but bear with me. All right. Only when you treat everyone as yourself. Then you realize, ah, this is something permanent. Even I die, I can still continue doing it. That's how Bodhisattva works. Even if only when there is no self, you can find your true self. Only you understand there is nothing is permanent. Then you find something that is permanent. All right. And until you reach and continue pursuing this mindset to the point of utmost perfection is what we call Nirvana. All right. It's what we call, it's not when you die or anything. Nirvana can be achieved in this. Because life and, life and death itself is also, is also impermanence, right? Once you reach to Nirvana, there's no life and death, right? There's no trying, there's no have and have nots. It's liberating, it's free, all right? You can go anywhere, anywhere, free of your so-called restriction and limitations. Uh, and 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 no longer get bound by anything else. You can go anywhere, six rims. You can even go to hell, next to another hell being. You know, suffering as they did, and then give them some inspiration. Maybe you do something that, you know, is unseen in the hellish beings. Maybe save yourself, um, saving other people from suffering. You know, I will burn more than you so that you will have less pain so those are bodhisattvas appearing in front of the those hellish beings that are suffering at the moment so they understand oh when I oh being selfless being caring being uh, you know honest truthful not being this you know two faced person is actually the way to live right um, they will have one moment one specter of kindness you know, Bodhisattva Siddhi Gaba will come and help them, pull them out of there. So, you know, this is a powerful thing. Nirvana is a powerful thing. It's not just die and then hide yourself in a corner. It's the ultimate freedom 
to do everything, whatever you wish. Then you find your, this is myself. This is where you can control your youth. You can be young, you can be old, you can be big, you can be small. You, you become free. Yeah. That's what self is about, right? And permanence. You understand the Dharma, you understand how things works, you understand cause and effect, you're no longer fooled by your own desires, you no longer have desires. You, the, the desires is your plaything, you can use it to save all sentient beings. You use desires of the sentient beings, whatever they need, they desire man or woman, they desire wealth, they desire um, you know, children, they desire a successful career, etc, etc. You give it to them, you help them to get it. And then they have bigger understanding of the world and then they eventually get set their center towards the enlightenment. So that's how you do it. And that's when you understand ah permanence. You know, permanence in 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 the Dharma. You know, it's not uh, not not staying on those fleeting things. So this is what perfection means. Uh, your life is or well, your your the way to this way of living is in, is permanent is full of true self all right I'll, I'll stop here i think uh it's already been two hours almost um thank you so much auntie Yanzi. thank you so much everyone it's a bit splinter my apologies uh my uh i, I can my mind is everywhere today um very hard to concentrate so hopefully we can continue on our uh, next session with more coherency let's end this with the dedication of marriage and chanting 10 times on it may the merits and virtues adorn the buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings from those in the three paths below may those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion then and leave the teaching for the rest of this life then be born together in the land of ultimate peace Ten times Amitofo. 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 Thank you, everyone. Good night.